It's so disappointing to see how far Star Wars has fallen under the oversight of Disney and Kathleen Kennedy at Lucasfilm. The Acolyte has finally concluded with the premiere of its recent finale. My biggest problem with Disney Lucasfilm, and in this show in particular, is that there are no heroes, only villains. All of the Jedi in this show have been portrayed as either corrupt, deceitful, predatory, overzealous, or just straight up incompetent and weak thrown about by the whims of their emotions, they do not act like Jedi would act. In the finale episode in particular, there is one character who is from the High Republic books and comics. This is all Disney canon material. And that is the Jedi Vernestra. In the finale, this character is portrayed as a villain. It is pretty much confirmed that Vernestra is the stranger's former Jedi master. And there definitely seems to be some funny business going on with Vernestra and this complicated history. Because Kamir did explain earlier that his former master was the one who gave him that enormous scar on his back. And we've seen the trademark weapon of Vernestra being this lightsaber whip. And every time we see her, there's like this menacing music playing She's definitely the Palpatine of this show. She's very much portrayed as a corrupt, manipulative villain. Without any heroes, there's really no reason to watch this show or care about any of the characters. There is no realistic explanation of what any character is doing, why they're making the decisions that they do. When it comes to the twins, this is particularly egregious because they just flip-flop motivations on a dime. This is kind of a theme in this show also, which is another big issue that I have, which is that there is no consistency. This show just doesn't know what it wants to be. Leslie Henland doesn't know. You can tell that. She wants there to be this spectrum of morality. But what ends up happening is that we simply don't care about the so-called protagonists and antagonists at this point. And they kind of trade places all the time. The heroes and villains, or so-called heroes and villains, really aren't those archetypes. They are a shade of villains or a shade of some heroic actions. It's just different shades of gray. And you don't really care about anyone at this point when they just change motivations so quickly and without any reason. After watching the finale, it's really heartbreaking I just felt sad. There was no good feelings about wanting to see what would come after with the characters because I don't care about any of these characters because they are all villains. You have Vernestra parading around, straight up lying to the Senate, the High Council. She has now stated at the finale of this episode that Jedi Master Soul was a rogue Jedi who killed his accomplices that were with him on Brundock during this botched Padawan recruitment. After all the Force cult witches were killed under the strangest circumstances, I just find it interesting that there is no one to root for while watching this show. And you think that possibly the show is trying to get us to root for Osha, the good twin. And I say good, but there really is no good and evil twin. They kind of are played exactly the same. And many at the beginning who thought the show had promise liked Jedi Master Soul. But through the course of the show, he demonstrated that he is at the whim of his emotions. He's deceitful. And during the events at Brendock 16 years ago, when they discover the twins and the Force Cult of Witches, he is portrayed as predatory. They just throw out a sentence of why Soul doesn't have a Padawan. And I guess this is some sort of attempt to lay the groundwork for why he said suddenly wants to take on Osha as his Padawan. But there's nothing really there to show us why. He just says that he feels this connection to her. And the events of Brendock are just so confusing. The way Leslie Headland wanted to portray this, she wanted to convey that really no one was in the wrong. But after the show has ended, clearly the Jedi are not just at fault, they are straight up villains. 
Which is interesting because at episode 7, when we see the full details of what happened on Brendock, we actually see why Sol acted the way he did. At some point, the mother Anasea, the leader of the tribe of witches, starts transforming into this evil smoke monster and starts to disintegrate May. And Leslie Headland herself has come out to explain all of these details that just weren't conveyed well in the show. She confirmed that what Mother Anasea was doing in this moment was transferring them both into the Force. And she referenced Jackie's line earlier when she said, It is an honor to witness anyone or anybody transform into the Force. And when she said that, that was in the wake of one of the bug creatures on the Wookiee Forest planet being killed by the Jedi in self-defense. So that was what was happening in that moment. Now, Leslie Headland has contradicted herself by saying that she was attempting to transform them both into the Force without killing themselves. But that is just not possible. And she clearly just doesn't understand what she wanted to convey in that moment. She wanted it to be ambiguous. But for most people, when witnessing what was happening, it was clear that May was in some sort of danger. She was being disintegrated. And with Mother Anasea, who was clearly not de-escalating the situation when she did this, she clearly was conveying a sense of foreboding. And Sol, who thought he was protecting May, well, he thought it was Osha at the time, he acted to protect her by killing Mother Anasea by running the smoke through with his lightsaber. So what many people, and I think general audiences, would have gotten from that is that he had good intentions. And so when we go to the next episode, the finale, Sol isn't allowed to explain all of what was happening when he had to kill Mother Anasea. He's interrupted several times to the point that it is infuriating. And when they all meet up and reunite on the planet Brendock, Osha, just seemingly out of nowhere, turns on her former master when she realizes that he lied to her but he never explains the details of that situation. There was definitely more than him just killing their mother. It was to protect the children. And the way he says it, he admits to killing their mother and just simply saying, I did it to protect you both. He just keeps repeating that without any more information about what was going on. And Osha just goes off. This is her turn to the dark side. This is what they were building up to, what most people saw coming from a mile away, the acolyte who can kill without a weapon, and lo and behold, it's just her using force choke on Soul. And what does he do? He just lets it happen. And he even ekes out the words, it's okay. I just have so many problems with this. The way this came across is that you feel actually very sympathetic for Soul, especially in the light of what happens afterwards. At the very end, when Vernestra is sweeping all of this under the rug, Indara, Torbin, Kelnaka, all of the Jedi that were involved in that initial incident, she now pins their deaths on Master Soul, saying, quote, a rogue Jedi named Soul killed his accomplices to maintain their cover story. This makes absolutely no sense because they've already had this meeting and investigation underway that involved other Jedi and notoriously involved Jedi Master Kiadi Mundi, which caused a lot of controversy among the fandom. And now it makes even less sense because Sol was on Coruscant when Jedi Master Indara was murdered. And there's also video footage of May. There's also an eyewitness of what happened. So now everyone is just going to go along with what Vernestra is saying now. No one is going to second guess what happens. Kiati Mundi is not going to say anything. Yord's Padawan. We saw her there when they came to arrest Osha. They had the eyewitness with them who saw what turned out to be May murdering Master Indara. So everyone is just going to forget all of the investigation up until this point and accept what Vernestra is saying. Again, this makes absolutely no sense from the story perspective because the writers don't care about logic or reason or making the decisions of their characters make sense. And clearly, they are making Vernestra out to be the architect of evil. Vernestra, in what was a very sinister moment, is shown doing a funeral pyre for Sol, of course, with the narration that she's pinning everything on him and saying that he killed himself. And since she burned his body, it definitely comes across as her burning the evidence. 
And then going back to Osha, the original protagonist, for her to not extend some form of mercy to her master, who she knew since she was very young, I would think that she would have extended more mercy, more understanding, or tried to get Sol's full explanation of what happened. She extends great mercy to her sister who did try to kill her, to prevent her from leaving to become a Jedi, locked her in a room and set the place on fire. So she extends mercy to her sister, but none for Sol who did save Osha's life and for all intents and purposes for what Leslie Headland did establish also saved May in an act of defense. These actions are just inexcusable, and they do not justify Osha's descent to the dark side. And by the way, that moment too just felt so hollow when Osha ends up force choking Soul. There is no emotion on her face, and I'm convinced at this point that Amanda Stunberg does not know how to emote. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but this was a very dramatic, tense moment. She should have been brimming with anger and hatred toward her former master. And you get none of that on her face. She is almost a deadpan expression. So this moment just fails on multiple levels. But again, just speaks to my core issue with this. Were we supposed to cheer this moment? Were we supposed to understand her actions? Because afterward, we have what they tried to convey, which is a touching moment between sisters. These are both cold-blooded killers, and they are trying to portray them as these lovey-dovey long-lost sisters. And I'm sorry, after all that we've seen, the writers have not put in the effort to make that make sense, to make the audience care. They didn't do enough to justify what happened to Sol. It is honestly very sad that his past life has now been tainted. He will now be remembered as a rogue Jedi murderer. There's really so much to pick apart in this entire show. Pacing, writing, dialogue, character development or lack of character development, motivations. There's so many details that break your immersion. It just doesn't feel like Star Wars in any sense. At this point, with how they've portrayed the Jedi, it does feel malicious. It feels antagonistic, some of the choices that they made in depicting these various Jedi that we've seen over the course of the show. And this is another thing that stood out. Several times, Jedi were trying to get evidence to show the council of what was going on on Brendok with this Virgins in the Force. They had to get evidence to prove what was going on. But Vernestra can just say whatever she wants and the council and the Senate just takes it at that at face value, even though there are contradictions and evidence that was already known when it came to Indara's murder. This makes absolutely no sense and just comes across with the Jedi being deeply corrupt. And this episode also included two notable cameos, and I think they are both pointless and again feel antagonistic to the fans. They just inserted Darth Plagueis out of nowhere, had nothing to do with what was going on in the show. He just showed up on the planet with Kamir and Osha. He's just lurking in the cave watching them take off. Nothing to do with the story. Now you've made these events in the Acolyte connected somewhat directly to Anakin's origin. And I think there are those that just want Disney to pivot away from the Skywalker saga for a bit, but they just can't help themselves. So here again, at the finale, we have a direct line to what would factor in to the origin of Anakin Skywalker. It made no sense from a narrative standpoint because if you're a normie or any general audience member watching this, you wouldn't know who this figure is. You'd probably assume that this is the stranger's master. And why should they care when the show doesn't say why we should care? It's literally just a out of the blue cameo. And the other cameo, at the very end, Vernestra goes to meet Yoda. Yes, Yoda was around, of course, this whole time because of where they decided to insert this show. How he hasn't been aware of all of these Jedi deaths, I don't think they're going to explain it. Again, this just feels like a haphazard Rowan cameo, and we don't even see his face. We just see the back of his head as Vernestra comes into his chamber or whatever, seemingly to tell him her cover story that she's made up. 
And I guess we're supposed to believe that Yoda and every Jedi that was made aware of some of these events will believe her story. At the end of the day, I feel that it's just malicious at this point that Disney Lucasfilm under Kathleen Kennedy just wants to destroy what came before. You can't just be satisfied with creating your own original stories. No, you have to go back and repurpose stories from legacy characters to the new Disney canon characters and also pillage elements and storylines from the decanonized EU, twisting it and repurposing it without any thought or consideration as to what this would mean or to make it even meaningful. I hope this won't get a season two, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. The ratings and viewership numbers have just cratered for this show in comparison to the previous Disney Plus live action shows. And honestly, I feel like the reason why the show is doing so poorly is because of my biggest issue. There are no heroes, only villains. There is no one to root for. There is no one to care about. And even the ones that you did feel something for were twisted beyond belief. And there's nothing satisfying about the journey of Jedi Master Soul. It's just sad. This is so far beyond what George Lucas established for this IP and this mythology. It doesn't feel like Star Wars, so in my mind it isn't. Anyways, those are my thoughts and opinions, but I'm curious to know what you think about the Acolyte and its absence of heroes. Do you think there's any hope for the future of this franchise? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.